All right, welcome back to part two. We've been doing this a lot lately where we split these up. We always try to get through all of them at once, but uh, we never quite manage because we like to give as many of them as we can time. Um, here we are, we're gonna dive right back into the rest of the images submitted um, on the Facebook page a couple weeks ago. And uh, let's just get going. Vincent has Sydney's prom. Vincent's got one more. So we're gonna be brief with both of them here real quick. Can we look at the other one? Well, so I, I like that you sort of stayed out of the shade. That's a good thing to do. Or stayed out of the sun, I mean. That's a good thing to do. Nice open shade in their faces. Uh, watch the blown out areas. Just either underexpose and then bring it back later in post. Or just move them to a spot where there is no sun hitting them. You know, as simple as that. There's a stick coming out, which is a little bit distracting. So I may have lamp pull a post. Yeah, um, I may have moved them like even like even closer to here, but it's not a huge deal. Um, yeah, and then for the other picture, my advice would be white balance, white balance, white balance, and I might just either like crop in a teeny bit because this purple thing really stands out. I think, and you know. Um, and then warm it up a little bit, but really nice light. This is uh, a really great shot. I bet uh, these girls were really happy with that. Yeah, that was my first thought on both of these images is exposure on their faces is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and this one, I think you could also have just rotate it. You could have uh, moved just a step to the left, uh, and lost the intersection with her head, Sydney's mm. friend in the tree, also cut the purple person off at the same time. Um, and I think still would have um, captured the same nice image. So it's good. Thank you, Vincent. And I bet Sydney and her friends were happy. And we got one from Vera. I'm curious what the light source was here. What, looking down at an iPad, it feels more natural than that, though. It feels like there may be some nice window light, but it does seem kind of that it's coming from below. I think it's bounced window light. Okay. Christina thinks it's bounced window light. I think the lighting here is really nice. This is another one where I'm going to say if you'd shift it a little bit to the left. Now, Christina, you've talked before about this kind of intersecting point here. Yeah. And what's the rule with that? Remind us. So that's something I don't I don't follow it all the time, but it is always when I'm shooting, it's in the back of my mind to try to not get novices to intersect with the opposite cheek of where you, of your subject's face. Um, so ideally, you should have the nose inside the opposite cheek and leave enough room so that it doesn't intersect and it doesn't touch. Um, that is like one of the traditional rules of portraiture that you should follow. So I don't follow this all the time. If it's a particularly strong picture, I will still include it. That goes for any of the quote unquote rules that, um, you know, have been set by people over the years and in history or whatever. But, um, yeah, but just keep that in the back of your head. Think about it whenever you're taking a portrait. Try to get a little bit more of their face. Um, and the other, uh, the other rule, I guess I should touch on it, is for, for faces when you're photographing people or creating portraits, is that um, you should always be able to see the other side of their, uh, the whites of their eyes. You should never see just one side of the white of their eyes because that just looks a little bit funny. A little Do we bit see weird. any white of no, eyes here? No, no, okay. no. I just, it came into my mind and I figured I would include gotcha. it along okay. with the nose one because I feel like it's one of those funny rules. But yeah, that is one of the things, those those two things are things that you would totally get um, points deducted if you had submitted to a PPA competition and that you were being judged by okay. Um, so I brought you in to say about that rule, but how do, how do you feel about this image in general? I think it conveys the idea of a private moment pretty nicely. But I, w I worry that there's not enough separation in the background, in the back of his head. And, and that I feel like this could have been used as room light, and it's just kind of a distracting element. You know, like I, my eye keeps going, this is the brightest spot in the picture. And so my eye naturally goes to the brightest spot in the picture. So I would probably try to reframe 
um, maybe put that behind him in such a way that it highlights his hair. Um, but it, it does convey the idea of, an, of a nice private moment, so. Thank you, Vera. Rick has a busy marina. I think this falls into the category of kind of a, uh, you know, a snapshot picture. Um, there are some neat elements to this, though. I really like the repeating lines of these little power boxes all the way down and, you know, almost very white. Everything is white, white, white. We get little bits of color here and there. But um, those things, I think, make it a strong image. I think this could image could benefit from getting down lower and really letting this dock stretch off into the distance um, and looking between the bows of these boats more. No, I like that perspective. I think it's fine. And um, it's not symmetrical enough to me. It looks like it's wanting to be symmetrical, but it's not quite. It's just kind of leaning to the left a little bit. And it's just, I think it's too busy for me. Like that, I feel like that boardwalk is not, or that dock is not an interesting enough thing to be a main focal point, And that's what is the main focal point. Thanks, Rick. Robert's got a little boy spitting water. All right, Robert, first thing I would do is um, crop in. Now, you were shooting with the 55 to 250 at 55. Go ahead and zoom, or you could, you know, after you've taken the picture, crop. But before, zoom in. The little boy spit in the water is the focus. Fill the frame with him. That would get rid of this distracting bits here and here, and it would also soften this white building here that's kind of intersecting with his head. Um, but... That all said, this is really cool, and that's really fun capture there. One eight hundredth of a second did a really nice job of capturing that moment of him spitting that water out. Um, yeah, I like that. Anything, Dad? No, it's nice that you've got him in the shade, and he's in in pretty nice light. I would warm this picture up though too. Yeah, and you mean by white balance? Yeah. Thanks, Robert. All right, Robert. So we already got one of yours. So just real quick, I'm going to say. This is a good spot to, I think, really talk about focusing in on a subject. Just capture one of these rhododendron blooms. Um, these other ones aren't adding anything, and we got this dead stick right here. So really focus in. But I like your aperture here, and um, the back, the softness of the background and the speckled light is really nice. And the exposure here is really good. But just do one. It looks like you may have filled in with flash. Is that right? No, it says no, flash. No, it says did not fire. I think we just have some really nice light coming in from... The side of the shade. Hmm. Thanks, Robert. Digital Canvas 72. I know you have two as well, and I, the next image we're going to look at is a stronger one. Um, so we'll say just about this one. It's, it's a nice photo. It's hard. It's another one of those ones where I feel a little bit like it's a beautiful spot, um, but what is the subject? Uh, you know, and I think sometimes beginner's answers and my answer would be many times well it's this beautiful spot um, but we need we need a little bit more something more to have some impact we just got some little bit of grass here we got a little bit of tree branches sticking in we have this interesting clump of phragmites over there and we have this nice long line with some pretty colors in it um, but I also just say you're kind of testing out this p340 nikon um, it's interesting to see a little noise in the water there um, but so this is where I would really pick one thing in the scene and focus on it. Yep, I agree. But then you have this shot, which is gorgeous and beautiful and amazing. Uh, the detail here on this little hummingbird going after these flowers is awesome. And I think it's just, I, I've tried to photograph hummingbirds before, back in the film camera days, and I wasted a many a slide. But I love that even at 1 16th, hundredth of a second that the uh, wings here are blurry. Yeah, that's very cool. That's very cool, but not super blurry. I've seen the slightly longer shutter speeds where, um, slightly longer being like one eight hundredth of a second, where the wing, you can tell the wing moved all the way back and forward in a beat. So it's really great. But look at the detail in this shot. Great. Nice very image. Cool. I'm not sure what to add. I think it's very well done. You maybe could have shot a little after the fact, say you could have shot at a little shallower depth of field um, to soften this stuff back here. But F8 is a much safer place to be when you're trying to capture a hummingbird that's moving so fast and quick. 
um, and to make sure all of it is in focus. Yep. Huh? That's what I would have gone with too. Really nice. I can give this a star. There's a couple others that have deserved a star tonight or a favorite, but um, this is one of them. Wait, Robert, is this a third one? Oh, Robert, we're not doing three. Okay, Eric. Eric Jones has Happy Baby. And this was his, this was his inspiration to start photography three months ago. I'll just say that um, Digital Canvas 72 asked a neat question in the Flickr group a few weeks ago. Uh, what got you all started in photography? So Eric, it's neat to see that you are sharing that in this picture here of this cute baby with some beautiful blue eyes and a little ruffly collar. I would say it looks like you've got a really nice window right next to the baby. So you don't really have any need to fire off a flash. The flash is causing kind of unsightly shadows. They're very subtle, but like these shadows and this, this weird like speckly highlights right here um, and right here. And it just kind of takes away the really nice soft window light. So try it again with just window light. You don't need, you don't need the flash to fire. Yep, I think it's a great suggestion and you can go up a little bit higher ISO to balance out the, the light. Um, it doesn't look as sharp as it could be. Um, it looks like focus is a little bit sharper right here. So you want to watch where your point of focus is because the eyes don't look as sharp as they could be. I think it's a little closer to the camera. So it's nice. Eric, is this the next? Yes, Eric, another one by you. I saw this as I was going through. This is another, this is a beautiful capture. Yeah. Really nice composition, really nice uh, exposure, detail in these little bits of grass here. Um, yeah, I really like that you turned it into a black and white. Um, we've been seeing lots of flower pictures and color, and I think that while the colors are really nice, it's also really, really cool just to just to just make it a lot more simple. And I don't know, I think this is just very elegant and very beautiful. Thanks, Eric. Michael, I think Michael, you have two. Yep, Michael's got two. Um, and this one is, uh, oh, Roy is saying that nice that they do those in a field. That's true. It's neat that these cars are parked out in the field. It gives it a little bit more life on the grass. Uh, I think you have post-processed this a little bit. The colors look a little, a little muted, a little blue. I'm going to channel Christina here and say the white balance is off. And I think you chose to do that, but I'm, I'm not crazy about it. I think this could work, um, better, be a stronger image with kind of, true to life, sharp, bright colors, um, is what I think. And the other thing is really minor, and this is something that I don't think I'd noticed till after I took the picture too, is the, the angle you took this picture on, we have an intersection here of um, this gas uh, with the light. I'm pretty sure these two things aren't attached to each other, and that's bothering me. <laughs> Um, and another thing is this car back here is bothering me. I think you could have moved to the right a little bit, shot the car from the front, lost that intersection, hidden that car back there, and there may be some other cars further to the left that then would have been captured. But I think that's what I would suggest here. You have also shot at a wider shutter sp I mean, aperture. Your F10 oh, right, right here, F10. Which yep. is just a little too deep, I think. It is, yeah. F10 at that distance, you probably have just about everything in focus, which you can see all the way back here to those trees in the distance are in a little softer, but just barely. That's a good point. Great. And then this one here, talking about getting in close and getting your detail. You've done that. I think you could get even a little bit closer and lose this space here. Really? No, you're right. I was going to say back up and don't cut off the tire. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I agree. And another F10. This is one where I think, again, you could shoot. Um, looks like, I think what you did is you put it on aperture priority, put F10, and then walked around and shot a lot of pictures with that. That is a way to get very sharp images from front to back. Um, but with that 40 millimeter lens, you could certainly go to F3.2, F4, and still get very nice sharp images. Makes good. Thank you, Michael. Christopher Neumuller. Under the stars. Now, I love this. Landon says, how did you get a shot with having the stars blur? I'm not going to go into the whole 500 rule, 
Um, but you can see that there, it, this is a 30 second exposure. He said it and then I also saw it right here, 30 seconds. Um, you are starting to get some blurry. Notice these are not points of light, but they are a little bit lines. Over here, they're a little bit more points. It depends on how far you are from that center axis um, of the stars, how much they move. But basically, you're supposed to be able to divide your divide 500 by your focal length to get the maximum number of seconds you can use before you're going to start getting blurry stars. Um, and 30 seconds, 500 divided by 3.5. Sorry, I mean 500 divided by 18 is 27. So you're close, but this is a crop lens. So 18 is not your actual focal length. So it's really 500 divided by whatever 18 times 1.6 is, and that's 17 seconds. So that's a pretty significant difference. It, as I said though, in this image you can see that it hides itself fairly well until you get to these kind of stars out here on the edge. It must be a little bit further from that center point. I have a blog post about this. Somebody reminds me, I can put a link down below to it. Um, but that all said, I think this is a nice image. This is done under moonlight. You did a little post-processing to make the sky look a little darker because I think moon can very easily a lot of bright white light. Um, I think it's a nice shot. Yep, I agree. It's a really cool shot. I don't think I have much more to add. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't think I really do um, either. I think this is... I think it's... Sky and foreground um, are balanced nicely and the amount of light on that building is good. It's good. Thank you, Christopher. Roger's got a male mallard flyby. Let's take him with a point and shoot. SX40. This is a great shot. Uh, I think that, I'm not sure if you lucked out or if you were really waiting till it got framed by this cloud here, um, but the fact that it's kind of hitting that blue space is good. Yep, I, I think if I were to get really picky, I would frame the mallard probably more in the center over here, but, you know, I, with shutter lag and things like that, I, you know, it, I think this is a really nice shot. Taking that 15.6 millimeters? That duck was really close to you. Interesting watermark. I, I, oh, wow. Well, I didn't, didn't really notice it. it until I looked at it. So I'm going to say I like that softer looking watermark. And then second one from Roger. I think this is um, a good example of the Think Before You Click series that I'm working on. The other one of leading lines. I think you've put this interesting statue head right in the center of the frame. And that doesn't make it as strong as if it was off to the one side with the lines of these bricks leading towards it. I think we could work from either side, uh, mostly the, the right-hand side, so that it was still facing towards us a little bit more. Would give it a little bit of a stronger image, but otherwise, quite nice. Yep. David's got this one of a fountain in downtown San Diego. Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. So he came in, and during the long exposure of about eight seconds, fired off the flash at full power and that added the sparkles into the water flow. Hmm. Huh, okay. So I think that's all of this light coming in from here on the left is the flash. And I think that does add to this statue. I think it may be a little flat if both sides were lit the same. So that's good. I think this is nice and it's kind of framed under this tree well. But at F10, that background being so in focus can almost read that sign back there and yeah. it's on bright then and the reflections here that's all really taking away from the subject here and mm -hmm. it, it, it definitely reduces the impact of this of this image yeah i would say you have up to 1.4 i you know even going to like 5 or 4 and maybe getting like a teeny bit closer would have helped a little bit um, now I, I'm going to guess, David, that you, there's a lot of light here. Even though it's nighttime, I think you went to F10 so that you could get that 8 second shutter speed. Uh, so maybe a neutral density filter or come back when it's even darker. Um, if it gets any darker with street lights and things like that around. Or control the, the flash exposure. Turn it way, way down. Yep. That would help too. All right. Thank you, Ricard. This is cool. I don't know what it is. I think it's a palmetto leaf. Or or it's, you know, it's one of those plant leaves that's 
kind of fern-like and palm-like. It's not super in focus, but I think it's a cool abstract shot. I would say crop off the top negative space or empty space, dead space, and you've got a pretty solid image. Yep. Bring your highlights down just a little bit if you can. You got a little bit of purple fringing here around those bright areas. Um, but otherwise, I think it's really neat, and I love the abstract and the repetition of it. Thank you. Linda's got some puffball fungi. Did you hear the, about the mushroom that walked into the bar? And he said, bartender, can I get a drink? I did hear about that, actually. And the bartender said, we don't serve your kind around here. The mushroom says, aw, why I'm not? I'm a fun guy. I'm a real fun guy. All right. Sorry, Linda. <laughs> I like the detail here, and I like how close you got. This is the 18 to 135. The kit lens can do that nicely. I really like the colors. I think the colors are very... It's just a very, it's kind of a muted color palette, just very, pretty neutral. But it feels true to life here. Yeah, it, yeah. it does. I might warm it up a little bit. There are some shadows here that are a little bit, are a little bit blue, but um, otherwise it, I just, it's really nice. Yeah. I'd say that this other puffball fungi over here being slightly out of focus isn't adding anything to me for this. And I'd mm -hmm. like to see, um, you know, somehow to get just this guy not no. necessarily saying crop in but i disagree do you you yeah that, that. i think that's fine and i think there's enough detail like that's the same thing going on here that there is here and there's enough detail here to be able to make up all the rest you know the information we need to know what this is so i think it would be i know maybe if you found a completely different composition but i just really think that composition is very strong in this image and it works really well so if you were to change it I'm not sure that it would work so well okay good thank you Linda and Crystal has Liam I think you've exposed really nicely um, and maybe with a little post-processing as well because we have full sun what well, seems like full sun on this side of the face and some pretty serious shade over here but um, you've done a nice job of not blowing out um, and not losing any details in the shadows and so that's nice. I love this. I love this. I love his hair um, It's really sweet uh, And it's a nice nice photo the way he's kind of coming around and framed between these two pieces right here I think this could be stronger as a portrait um, Yes uh, As a portrait shot and that's something I'm working on you're helping me to work on when we work at weddings is I take Many more portrait shots You uh, don't or, take as many Portrait shots. I take more than I used to. Yes, you do. Okay. Why do, why do you want me to take so many portrait shots at weddings? Well, that's just kind of how I... I don't know. I, I feel like that's kind of a style that I really like. It's just that the framing of portrait shots, for me, are nicer. I feel like you have to, in order to be able to fit in a whole frame on a landscape shot, you have to... Um, get much more of it much more of the scene in most cases um, whereas a portrait shot you can get in a little bit closer especially when you're photographing people you can get a lot closer without sacrificing important parts you know like right. there have been horizontal portraits that i've seen that are just like the head and that just looks kind of weird. Right, yep. So. I agree. So I, I think the, the easiest answer, and it's not the only one, but the easiest answer is it immediately lets you, if you're taking a picture of a person, get a really nice portrait. <laughs> you know, it's called portrait mode. I don't know. Um, with Without having to think too hard about what you're cropping out because you're just filling the frame with your subject and you're, it's not too weird. I will say that landscape can work too. I, I don't mind the space over here, except for that yellow light pole yeah. um, power thing. That's bright and really drawing the eye. That's something I think that could be photoshopped out without too much trouble. You have to get it and its shadow probably, or maybe not the shadow too, because it's just the shadow back there. But um, otherwise, really nice. You have anything to add? Nope. Great. Thank you, Crystal. All right, and that is the last of the images from that group that got posted on Facebook a few weeks ago. Now remember you all have the assignment. Our next critique will be looking for those dual images. Big scene, focused in. 
we had those ones from right there. Terry, big scene, focused in. Use this as inspiration for going and finding your big scene and then focus in on a smaller subject for it. Uh, as always, we love that you submit your images to be critiqued. I know it's not always easy. Thanks so much. Keep on taking those photos. We'll keep on critiquing them. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.